Meta has released a new bidding strategy and I've had tons of messages, comments, etc. about this and that's because bidding strategies are really, really important. And in this video, I'm going to explain what this new Facebook ads bidding strategy is and whether or not you should use it. So to show you what I'm talking about here, I'm in an example uh, Facebook ad account and I've just created a quick example leads campaign. One I'm about to show you applies to other campaign types as well. I'll explain more about that um, later on. But I've gone to the ad set level because that's where this uh, where you set the bidding strategy and where this comes into effect. Now let's scroll down beneath the conversion location. That's not important for the purposes of this video. And then we get to this section here and we've got performance goal. For those who aren't familiar, that's where you tell Meta what it is that you really want. So because we've selected the leads objective, it has defaulted to maximize number of leads. And that's what we're gonna want. If you're using different campaign objectives, you have different options. Like you could tell Meta, I want as many landing page views as possible. I want as much reach as possible. Again, it's gonna vary depending on uh, the campaign objective that you choose. This video is not about performance goal, but it's relevant. So you select that to start with. And then beneath that, we've got this cost per result goal option, uh, which is a new bidding strategy that we're talking about. Now, this is a really interesting feature. I've had so much interest about it. I can absolutely see why. I think there are some misconceptions about it. So I'm gonna show you how it works and then talk through the pros and cons, whether or not you actually wanna use this. So let's say I'm willing to pay a maximum of 15 pounds per lead. I could come in here and enter in you know, 15 pounds as my cost per result goal. The first thing that I need to clarify with this bidding strategy is that word goal. Cost per result goal. This is a target, not a cap. By no means are you guaranteeing when you enter in, for example, 15 pounds or whatever number it is that you want to enter, that you are going to get leads for that price. It's a goal. It's giving meta information of this is my target. This is what I'm willing to pay. Please work towards getting me that as opposed to it being a hard cap. Uh, that's really important. Now, this replaces some of the other cap options that we used to have, cost caps, bid caps, and things like that really simplifies it down. I think this is much better and much more user-friendly, uh, despite the fact that there are, of course, some uh, some misconceptions around things that there always have been around the cost caps to do with bidding strategies. Now, the first misconception is you might be thinking, well, why don't I just set this as cheap as possible, right? I could set my cost per result goal to a pound. It'd be amazing if I get leads for a pound. It'd be incredibly profitable campaign. My leads usually cost $30. Why don't I try and get them for $2? That won't happen. That's not how it it's going to work. If you set your cost per result goal too low and Meta feels that it's just impossible to achieve that, it's unrealistic, your ad simply won't run. You'll either not spend your full daily budget or your ad simply won't run at all uh, because Meta's going, well, we're not going to run your ads because we can't get you your cost per result goal. So trying to set this artificially low is not some sort of Facebook ads hack that's going to get you amazingly cheap leads or amazingly cheap sales. That's not how it works. But the upside of adding in a realistic cost per result goal, so if I change this back to 15 pounds and let's say we know that that's realistic for this example business. The, the upsides of setting a realistic cost per result goal is that your ads should not run, your budget will be reduced when your ads are not profitable. Now that could be seasonal, perhaps there are certain times of the year where your ads are not as profitable as others, therefore you're quite happy for Meta to reduce your budget in those times. It could be uh, more short term, so it could be something along the lines of certain days of the week don't perform as well for you typically, and again Meta's like, we're not going to reach the goal over the weekend, this is much more of a business that generates better results Monday to Friday. We'll reduce the budget back down on those days. Um, it could be for particular spikes around holidays where we know Black Friday, for example, costs are going to spike because there's lots more advertiser activity. If that's not a good time for your business and you're not going to get lots of conversions for a good price, Meta's going to see that and again, reduce your budget back down, maybe not even run your ads for those time periods. So that is the main positive, the main use case, as opposed to just trying to get as really, really cheap leads or really, really cheap sales. So there are some other things I need to explain about the cost per result goal and whether or not you actually want to use it. Before I do, I just want to quickly let you know about our done for you Facebook and Instagram advertising services. So my company can create, manage, and optimize your ad campaigns for you. We can take that workload off your hand, hopefully help you get much better results. We certainly have for a lot of clients that we work with currently. If you're interested in finding out more, there is a link in the video description. You can click on that, come through to our website and book in a free call directly into our calendar just to find out more at this stage. Hopefully we get a chance to work together. So should you use the cost per result goal bidding strategy? Well, firstly, it's not available for all campaign objectives. So depending on your strategy and which campaign objective you're using, you might simply not be able to use this. Then within the campaign objectives that it is available for, you need to be careful when you do and don't use it. So for example, if you're running a leads campaign optimizing for leads and you know what you can afford to pay cost per lead wise, it can make a lot of sense. If you're running a sales campaign that's optimizing for purchases and you know what you can afford to 
pay to acquire a new customer, what you can afford in terms of your cost per result, your cost per purchase. Again, that makes a lot of sense. We can't pay more than $25 cost per purchase. Beyond that, we're not profitable. Let's set that at our goal and allow Meta to adjust things according to that objective. However, if you're running a traffic campaign, optimizing for landing page views, that's where it starts to get tricky because if you just have a blanket rule or a goal around how much you're willing to pay cost per landing page view or cost per link click, well, some link clicks are going to be more valuable than others. Some landing page views are gonna be more valuable than others because they may well convert a lot better. If we go back to the Black Friday example, you may well see that your cost per link click is significantly higher during that time period, but that's okay for your campaigns because buyer activity is significantly increased. People want to take advantage of the, the sale, the promotion you're running. They're far more likely to convert when they're there. So basically, if you're optimizing for something further down the sales funnel, like sales, purchases, leads, um, then I think there's a good use case for this cost per result goal bidding strategy. If you're optimizing for something higher up the sales funnel, either because that's what you've chosen to do, not normally what I'd recommend, um, or because maybe that's the only option if your conversions take place on a third party website and you can't track those, for example, I, I would be more nervous about uh, implementing the cost per result goal because I think it could throttle your ad spend uh, decrease in that case the amount of say link clicks or landing page users are getting and that might not be the right thing if they're converting better or it's a right time of year or, or anything along those lines. If you do decide to give the cost per result goal bidding strategy a go there are a couple other things that you need to be aware of. Firstly it may well result in lower ad spend and fewer conversions. That sounds quite obvious. You might think, well, obviously going through this, but I've spoken to a lot of people that are using it that aren't actually aware of that, that even if you set your daily budget at $100 a day or whatever, if you've got your cost per result goal too low for what's realistic, what Meta can realistically achieve, then you might end up spending $30 a day, $40 a day. Whilst it might mean that your Facebook ad campaigns are more profitable, more successful, that you have a lower cost per result on that spend, maybe that isn't beneficial for your business because you're going, well, yeah, we're generating a lower cost per lead, Lead, but now we've got sales team that kind of sitting there not doing anything because we haven't got the lead volume. It's actually better for the business if we pay a little bit more per lead and we get more leads in so that we can occupy their time and they can get more conversions and the, the whole business functions that way. Secondly, if you have got lower spend and fewer conversions, you're less likely to exit the learning phase. It's gonna take you longer to get out of the learning phase. So when it comes to the campaigns optimizing themselves, through Meta's AI, or you as an advertiser learning and being able to optimize the campaigns through looking at, okay, this ad got this cost per result versus this ad got this per cost per result. We know that data is required in both those scenarios. And if you spend less, you get less conversions. It takes longer for that data to come through. Again, maybe you decide that's worth it, but it's just something to be aware of that you might have to take a longer time horizon to your ad campaigns. It might take longer for them to exit learning phase, it might take longer for you to optimize them to get to the point where they're performing really well. Now, adding everything up, all those pros and cons that we've discussed, most of the time as an agency, we aren't using the cost per result goal. We are sometimes, but not always. Now, in part, that's because we're really on top of our client campaigns. We're in their ad account all the time. We're making adjustments. We're very much aware of how things are going um, in a relatively short time period and if we need to change things and things like that, right? So if we were to see, for example, that the cost per result was spiking over a certain time of the year or days of the week, we would make adjustments and we would spot that. If you're wanting to approach your Facebook ads with a little bit more of a, a set it and forget it, not something I'd recommend, especially at the beginning, but you do wanna set up your campaigns, let them run, focus on other areas of business, I totally get that. In that scenario, it would be more attractive, we'd be more likely to use it and I'd be more likely to recommend it than if you're in there all the time. I think that often the cons, which are lower ad spend, less data, less optimization, both from you as an advertiser and Meta's AI, is detrimental in the long run. I'd rather get the data in, even if we pay a little bit more cost per result early on so that we can learn and improve things. Um, but maybe your business is in that situation. Maybe you know, you've know you got a small budget to work with, margins are thin, and you really need to maintain a cost per result goal. In which case, give it a go. I'm all for testing all new Facebook ads features we test, and I'd encourage a lot of Facebook advertisers to do so, unless of course I come and tell you that yeah, this is rubbish, don't worry about it. This is not the case here. There are some use cases that are good, sometimes where I don't think it should be used. If you feel like you might be one of those where it can be used well, by all means, give it a go. And if you do, let me know in the comments. Now, as I said, the cost per result goal is not a Facebook ads hack, but there are Facebook ad hacks that you can use that could literally double or more your return on ad spend overnight. I share five of my favorites in this video here. If you want to quickly and easily boost your Facebook ad results, this is the video to watch next.